Welcome to the Women and Money Empowerment Show. My name is Yulin Lee, and I am your host. In these episodes, you will hear my heart-to-heart conversations with women from all walks of life, sharing their wisdom and their journey to success. I hope through these stories, you will find inspirations and affirmation that ordinary people like you and me, we can achieve extraordinary results and live an extraordinary life. Now, let's dive into today's show. Well, welcome, welcome, Laura. I am so excited to have you on my show. Thank Um, you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. I'm so happy that we've connected. And, And, you know, the reason I'm so excited to introduce you to our audiences is because I know that you have a great story to share, how you have created the life that you want to live. And I think that is something that I think it's going to be very, very useful for a lot of people out there who always wish that they had this or that, but then how do you actually make it happen? So I think you have, you know, something that's very, very valuable to share. But before we dive into the details, though, I would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience so that they can get to know you a little bit. Sure. Um, Thank you again for having me. I'm really happy to share. I'm really actually honored that you just asked me to share my story because um, it's not an easy journey. Um, And we'll talk about that. So thank you. I'm a mindset coach and a business coach, and I help people who love what they do. Um, Generally, that means entrepreneurs, visionaries, creatives, but people who love what they do to take the next big step in their work. I'm really big on fulfillment and impact. So that's you loving what you do and and then making a beautiful impact on the world, as well as profit, um, where you and I really, really line up. And a lot of times people come to me when they're going through some sort of change or ready to create some sort of change in their business or in their life, and they need to line their business up to support those changes in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's I, I love working with people to do whatever is the next big thing for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think so often what we do is the day-to-day week to week, month to month, like the small steps to the big things. Um, So I'm here for the big and the small (laughs) change. Yeah, great, great. You know, the, you know, every time when I think about who's my going to be my next guest and in the context of the the theme of my show, which is woman and money empowerment, um, you came to mind because again, you know, because of your story and we're going to dive into it soon, because I think a lot of times I, I, I hear women or men, they talk about, oh, I wish I could do this, or I wish I could be living by the beach. But then they settle for their current situations. And then there's this uh, misconception that I need to wait for condition ABC to be, you know, can can I check off these lists before I can do all of these things. And so, but in reality, oftentimes, those conditions, they never get met in the way that we had envisioned that we need to have filled before we would do this big thing or other thing that we really, really want. And so your story, and you know, when I met you a few years ago, uh, when you told me that you were moving to Honduras, I was like, whoa, you know, where did that come from? And, you know, at the time I didn't really ask you for the details, but I've always been very interested in what was that process for you to, you know, to be living in San Francisco and then to have made the move to Honduras. So maybe you can, uh, we can start there. Yeah, sure. And it's funny because it, it, you, your reaction is what most people's reactions were. Um, It was like, okay, Honduras, you know, like that's random or that's sort of out of the blue. Um, And truth be told, it was a little out of the blue for me in that moment. I have moved so many times. I've moved to different cities, different states, different coasts around the U.S. for most of my adult life and done a lot of travel. And so um, one thing I have gotten really good at is knowing, and I just know what drives me. Some people you know, everybody's driven by in their life, I think by different things. And for me, I really just resonate with places when it's time for me to move. Sometimes I know it and I'm, you know, oh, okay, the place I'm living isn't quite what I want anymore. And, and then I'll think about, well, where do I want to go? Sometimes it's very logical and, you know, almost structured in that way. And this particular move was not at all that I was living in San Francisco in the city and loved it. I had been there for five years, had no intention of leaving anytime soon. 
but this place called to me. Um, and it's called Roatan, Honduras. It's an island in the on the Caribbean side. It's off the coast of Honduras and it's part of Honduras. When I came here just on vacation for a week, that was it. I realized, oh, this was, I didn't know it, but it sort of became like a scouting, <laughs> scouting trip. Yeah. Um, and I very quickly, I packed up and moved within six weeks um, wow. with my cat, with my elderly cat. So um, it was really big and out of the blue and a very intuitively led. I was really listening to myself, but it was almost as if I didn't have a choice. Um, it was one of those. And I think there's a lot of people who they would maybe never make the choice that I made, right? Mm -hmm. Moving to Honduras is probably not what they want to be doing. And I probably wouldn't have thought that either, you know, in the past. But I think we've all had big moments in our lives where we just felt like, I know it's time to have a baby, or I know I want to marry this person, or I know it's time to leave this job and start a business, right? And so it was really, truly one of those moments. And it makes a lot of sense for me on paper. And I could have gone through some sort of journey and process to go find where I wanted to live. But in this example, I didn't go through any process. I just trusted life and myself and went quickly. Yeah. So it sounds like your process was really about listening to your intuition. For this one, yeah, it really was. Um, because I, I like I said, I had no plans to leave San Francisco. There are some things where when I really sat and thought about it, there were some very logical good reasons for me to go. I speak Spanish. I've always wanted to live abroad. I've always wanted to live somewhere where I could speak Spanish. I've always wanted to live somewhere where I could go scuba diving, which is a huge reason that a lot of people move here or travel here because it's a great place for diving. Um, so it made a lot of sense for me in many, many ways, somewhat near the United States. So it's easy from a time zone perspective to work with people in the States, easy to get back to see my family. But that wasn't the first, you know, it was like the intuition spoke and I went, oh, gosh, I, I think I'm moving here. And then I kind of did my smart, logical due diligence to make sure that it made sense um, after the fact. And I've done it, I've made moves in different, in the opposite direction. I've made moves where I thought, I want to go somewhere. Let me find a place that makes sense to me. And I did the lists and the comparisons and the talking to people and exploring and research. It's very interesting that you, that you, you share that because, you know, I had a similar experience when my family and I, we moved to Paris uh, over 10 years ago now. And um, one of the things that my husband and I, we always talk about, you know, now uh, looking back was that if we had thought of too much we probably would have come up with so many reasons why we couldn't do it. We shouldn't do it at that moment that we could do it. So maybe sometime later, that's kind of part of the lesson here too, is that yes. sometimes when, when these intuitions are calling you, we may just have to follow. And, and that's also, I realize, you know, in my own investment, that's how I do a lot of my investments too, mm -hmm. is that I tend to go with my intuition first, and then I go back to use data to kind of validate my intuition. So it's not completely, you know, a thoughtless, you know, action, but at the same time, we don't get bogged down mm -hmm. uh, by too many of these logical reasonings why we should or shouldn't do any of these, these things. 100%. So as a money coach, I, I would love to ask you at that moment, when you're thinking about, you know, moving to Honduras and, and you're getting that calling, um, from a money perspective, did you have an idea of, okay, I have the money that I need to make the move or not? Or did you, how mm -hmm. did that come up or how did that worked out for you? Uh, and I'm asking this question because again, as a money coach, I know a lot of people who also use money as one of the reasons why they can't do these things because I don't have the money for that, you know, which is something I hear a lot. So I would love to hear your experience on, you know, yeah. how did you deal with the money issue? around the move. Yeah. And one of the things that I've learned, not just uh, to your point about money real quick, before I formally answer your question is, I think we often think things are more expensive than they actually are, or we don't. One of the exercises I do with my clients is whatever it is that they're working towards or trying to work backwards from whatever they're doing, we sit down and do the math. Because as simple and obvious as that sounds, of course, if you're doing business, running your business, you want to do the math. What you think you can afford or what you think you should charge or what you think would require in, you know, 
maybe you want to hire some people to, to your team, you probably think they charge more than they do, right? Or you probably think that when you look at spending that and then how that would change your tax situation, you may be misunderstanding whether you actually, quote unquote, can afford something. And so I think I see that a lot in my work. I know you do. And I think this is a, one of those great examples because what my original by the time I moved here in 2019, I had been an entrepreneur for about two years, maybe not even like a year and a half, maybe. And I was doing okay financially, but I still had some side jobs and I wasn't, I wasn't able to support myself financially yet at that, you know, with just my business. And I was really clear when I started my business after 18 years in corporate consulting, it was time to do work that felt more meaningful to me and to work with smaller businesses and do something that was just more direct with the business owner. And so I knew that as I was building that, what I wanted from a life perspective was not just the meaningful work, yes, but also I wanted to be able to travel. I'm a huge, like you, I'm a huge traveler. I think that's one of the first things that we have connected on. So my vision was I'll keep my bait, my home base in San Francisco, but I'd really like to spend at least 40%, maybe 40% of the time outside the country traveling or just go somewhere for a month and then come back to San Francisco. And so I did actually have a money plan at the time thinking, okay, if I have, ec I don't even remember how much it was to be honest, but like, if I have this amount, I can afford an apartment in San Francisco, maybe even rent it out when I'm not there, go away, come back and sort of have a flow that feels good for my life. And what happened when I just went here on vacation? Well, you know, first off, San Francisco, most places are cheaper than San Francisco as far as <laughs> cost of living. And so what I realized when I was drawn to, to be here and I thought, well, maybe I'll just be here for a little while. And then the more I thought about it, it was like, or you just move your home base. And in moving my home base from very expensive San Francisco to much more affordable Central American slash Caribbean dollars, mm -hmm. um, I actually was able to stop my side gigs. I mean, I gave myself a raise because I wasn't trying to pay San Francisco rates. And so the money in this example was really a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, I, and again, I could have said, oh, San Francisco is really expensive and I'm new to running a business. Maybe I should look at living somewhere cheaper, but I didn't want to at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm lucky that that just magically, you know, I manifested a situation that I wanted to go to that happened to be more affordable, mm -hmm. but yeah, I had the plan. And to your point, I think that's where I see a lot of my clients and even just friends, people who tell me, oh, I wish I could do what you're doing and I yeah. can't for whatever their reasons are. And I think a lot of times it's, well, I would need to make more money or I, I could do something like that, but I need to be able to do it. It'll be two years, three years from now. And all I did was set the intention within two years. I, you know, I think in about two years, I can have this sort of general flow in my life of travel and it happened <laughs> way faster um, yeah. than I intended. Yeah. So I do think it's about really, I think some of the message for your listeners is you don't have to move to Honduras and do something, you know, quote unquote, wild and crazy to find joy and happiness in your life. But whatever the thing may be that you're not even letting yourself have, like, what is your Honduras? Like, what is your, you know, yeah. live by the salty sea island and go diving on the weekends, which what's your thing? And where are you telling yourself that you can't have it? Is it that you can't because you have children, because, you know, you have a partner, because you have a lease, because you have a home, because you need more money or whatever. There are trade-offs for sure. And Right. I think we can create anything we want. And I think this is a, for sure an example. Of that. Yeah. And, and I think that, that this is exactly why, you know, we're having this conversation is because exactly what you just said is we can pretty much have everything that we want. Um, but what it takes, though, is creativity mm -hmm. in how to make it happen in allowing ourselves, because I think that's the other thing is like we, for many people, we don't realize that we're not giving ourselves the permission to yes. be creative, to come up with the solution, right? And um, it may take a few steps, but as long as you're moving in that direction, 
mm-hmm. that's what helps build the momentum. So thank you for, for for sharing that. And I can totally relate to what you mentioned about, you know, in your case, you setting the intention for creating that kind of life for yourself. And, and I know for some of the people out there listening to this, and they may think, oh, yeah, we're talking about setting intention that that woo woo stuff, but it does work. And, and I'll share a uh, very quickly, a very, you know, a small story yeah. on my way back. Cause I just came back from my, my trip to Hong Kong and Taiwan and on my way back, flying back from Hong, from Taiwan, I was waiting for the airplane in the lounge and they have a shower facility there. And I, it was so hot and sticky. And I was like, Oh, maybe I should go take a shower. And and I was kind of debating in, in my head. And then by the time I, you know, stood up and and went, went up and asked about it, hey, how can I, you know, take shower and use the facility there? And the guy told me, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, it's full because you, you need to kind of make the reservation, put your name on the list. And that list is full for, for, for the day. And I was really bummed out. I'm like, oh, because I was just, you know, I had been sweaty all day. And and I'm going to be on the fly for another 11 hours. And I was like, once I've already kind of made the decision in my head that I want to do a shower um, and and not wait until I get home, I was really, really disappointed. And so I sat back in my seat and then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to ask another person. So I wait till that guy left and I went to ask another server and she said the same thing to me. She said, oh, I'm sorry, it's full. But then she also said something else. She said, well, but we do have a wait list. So if you want to be on the wait list, I can put you on a wait list. And I said, great. Okay. Put me on the wait list. And then I asked her how long is, so is there somebody else before me? She said, yeah, there are two other person people, you know, in front of you on the wait list. And there's only two shower rooms, right? So and they give each person like half an hour. So I was like, okay, that's probably not going to happen, uh, you know, with their real list full plus two more people on the wait list. But then I sat down, like I was really in that zone. Like I wanted the shower at that moment. Right. And I said to myself, you know what? I think it's going to come open in 10 minutes. I'm going to have a shower in 10 minutes. And guess what? Literally in 10 minutes, that woman walked over to me. She goes, Miss Lee, the shower room is open now. I I was just like, Yes. You know, so talking about setting intention, right. And again, mm-hmm. it's, it, I did not logically tell myself to go set set intention, but I literally deep inside, there was a feeling, there was a voice and that the deep belief that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I voila. think that belief and a lot of times with my clients, I'll say, you know, they'll say, well, I hope this can happen or like, wouldn't it be neat if, and there's a lot of that and I'm, I'm all about that. There's nothing wrong with that, but what's even more powerful is choosing or deciding that you can create what you want. And if that's what you want, then decide, right. You decided in a way mm-hmm. you just knew you could, you, you were trust, you could look at it in your intuition or your heart, like your inner knowing you just knew right. that all was not lost and that this was absolutely possible. Right. Mm-hmm. And you were going to get your shower yeah. and then like <laughs> brain decided, right. I'm going to have the shower. And there it was. And I think that decision of what it is you want, you know, a specific lifestyle or a certain amount of money, whatever it is that you want in your business, you know, whatever it is, if, if you just sort of hope and wish there's, that's beautiful. And there's more power and more potency. And it's more likely to happen if, as you said, you believe it's going to happen, if you decide it's going to happen. Right, right. And I think then that gets you into a more positive space. Because by the way, the subconscious mind, I used to work as a hypnotherapist and the subconscious, there's a lot of science to back up what you're talking, right. what we're talking about. But there's a much more potency to your mindset once you decide or choose or know, I'm just going to have the shower. I'm just going to move to Honduras. And it gets you out of what I think how most people hold themselves back in life or business, which is getting stuck in the how. It's right. like, well, I want to do this thing, but I don't know how it's going to happen. And you get stuck in trying to figure it out. And I always push my clients to go, let's let's just dream a little bit more first. Like we'll get to the how, but right. if you can stay in that, like, what do you really want? And why right. do you want it? Right. And and why is that the best next step for your life or the, you know, 
because I do think we we need to create our happiness from within. It's not about, you know, Honduras didn't make me happy. I was, you know, added to my joy and it added to my ability to thrive. But um, I really think that that how am I going to get there is what is too big. Yeah. It's way too big. And right. we can do big things if, you know, if we plan them in small ways, but it starts with the knowing. It right. starts with, like you said, like almost the not planning to move to France, like the not planning and not researching to move to France, just deciding to move to France and trusting right. that you'll figure it out. Right. I always said that I'll, I moved a lot. Um, I moved a lot. <laughs> I've moved a lot. Um, different cross country trips with cats. I've changed jobs without having another job. I've done a lot of, you know, things that, you know, I was brought up the sort of ir- ir- irrational and, and not reasonable. And, you know, um, but I always just trusted the money would work out. I always just trusted I would figure out how to live in Los Angeles or how to, you know, buy gas in Honduras or whatever the thing is I have to do. Like the details are just details. So now that you've moved and it's been a couple of years, looking back, what were some of the lessons that gained from this experience that you can share with audiences? I think sometimes it's about being open to um, even like to a little bit to follow the same pattern of, or topic of what we've been talking about with the how, like you don't need to know how. And if you can just be clear about where you want to go and how you want to feel my how and the where, you know, the exact details of the location changed, right? I didn't get my original plan. I got the essence of what I wanted. I got how I wanted to feel um, from my original plan. And I got it in way better location for me, way better suited location for me, way better, you know, people for me and opportunities. And it was just a really beautiful fit in a way that I couldn't have possibly imagined. And I think we can get really stuck in the practical and practical is really important, but it comes after you've already decided what you want. It comes with the, as you said, getting creative. And that's the other thing. And I think it's something I'm just naturally good at, but it's something I've really honed over the years. I, even when I was working and consulting, even when I maintained a, I, know I always have maintained a steady job, but even when I was at one organization for many years, we changed, we were always consulting to different organizations and working in their offices. So my location within a long-term job was even shifting. Mm-hmm. And I think trusting yourself to adapt to the logistics or to trust that all of those things you can, if you just know first, then you can make the next step and the next step and the next step. I needed two things to get to Honduras, a Wi-Fi right um, connection. And I needed to know I could bring my cat. Right. The rest I figured out when I got here. Right. Right. So I, I think what you just said is that in reality, no matter, you know, I, I, again, this is like really talking about people get stuck on the how. Even if you think you know the house today, what you end up getting may not be what you thought it was going to be, mm-hmm. right? Because you said you ended up getting something that's even better than what you had imagined. You wouldn't have known that this, or you wouldn't have had what you had today if you didn't make the first move. That's, you know, just another reason why, you know, if, if there's a key message here is to tell people to let go of the how, let your desire and, let, and make that decision to guide you uh, in how to creating your life that you want. So that's, that's great. Thank you. And so again, you know, the two questions that I always ask my guests, one is what is your definition of success? I love that. Um, and this is another place where we're aligned because I'm always working with my clients to define that for themselves. Cause I really do think, um, you know, I've always lived a very non-traditional life, but I grew up in a very traditional place where everybody sort of followed the same general trajectory. And I think some of the things that make a lot of people happy, make a lot of people happy. But if that's not you, you have to find your own way. Um, Mm -hmm. So thank you for this question. I, um, for me, it's fulfillment 
in my work, I spent a long time enjoying pieces of my job, but I was never quite working in my zone of genius until I started my business. And that's always been really important to me mm-hmm. um, because I, I, it took me a long time to find it. Or at least I decided that it was a long time to find it. Um, so for me, it's fulfillment. I'm loving my life. I'm enjoying my work. Uh, I have the right balance between the two. And, and for me, that also means the freedom to travel and to, Mm -hmm. to go where my heart pulls me. Because as I said, I'm what draws me through my life is generally a a location. Um, So it's fulfillment. uh, It's impact. I want to make an impact with my work. I want to, you know, feel that I have some value to add to people, but also impact on my community, wherever I am. Mm -hmm. And then profit in my business is what supports all those other things. That's Mm -hmm. what I feel really enables us to thrive. Um, And I think if we can all, I think the more people that are doing work that they're uniquely suited to do and they're impacting the world in a beautiful way and making good money doing it, then that means they can keep doing it. It means they can make a bigger impact and have more fun. And I I think it all, all three of those things really sort of drive each other. Great, great. And then, so how does money show up for you in in your life and in your business? Being a money coach, I always ask this question. I love this question. Money and I have had an interesting relationship. I have had times where I wasn't making any money. Um, I have had times where I was making really, really good money um, and lots of times in between. And I think... um, even in my lowest income days at the end of the day. And I said this already, I just always trusted it would work out. Like I've always trusted we had a good enough relationship that (laughs) he, she wouldn't leave me. Um, And I think, and that's just me speaking sort of my whole life. But I think what I really believe about money now is it's an energy and just like anything, um, we can choose to nurture our relationship with it. We can really honestly kind of the same topic, like the same themes that we've been talking about, we can decide, Mm -hmm. you know, to turn our money story around if that's what we choose. Um, But we have to choose it. We have to decide it. I really think money is misunderstood. If money was a person, I think money is misunderstood in many cases and is, is to blame in many cases. And I think, again, I think we can create whatever we want and money just supports us in that. It's it's really sort of a supportive energy. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you for sharing that because um, I, I basically what I'm hearing is you recognizing that we need to trust uh, in our relationship with money. And, you know, you said something like if, if money was, was a person, and this is exactly one of the exercises that I have people do is, you know, imagine money is a person. What is your relationship like with money? And so just from that alone, there's a, you know, we can tell a lot about how we feel about money. That is also at the end of the day, what drives our behaviors around money and then Absolutely. from there, it's the results that we have in our life, right? Our financial results is a reflection of everything that we talked about. Yeah, it's a great question. So what are the, like, do you have a parting thoughts or, you know, final uh, words of wisdom to share with our audiences? I will say one other thing, because we've touched on this a little bit in terms of like, you called this a bold move. And I think whatever you want to create, it's possible and it doesn't need to be big to other people's standards, right? Mm -hmm. It can be whatever it is that you want. But, but Mm -hmm. I think if you feel compelled to do something big, however Mm -hmm. you define big, I think it's really important to remind people, this has been um, why I said I was so honestly, really appreciative of you asking me to share this part of my story, because while I've been really, really clear about building the life that I want and that my choices are what works for me. Mm -hmm. I have been met with a lot of resistance from people who love me dearly, who have the best intentions, but would never ever choose my lifestyle. I think what I just want to say is if you want to do something big, absolutely you can do it and be aware of the comments that you get from other people. And just like any feedback that you would receive or decide not to receive, from others, they have every right to say what they think about your whatever crazy idea, mm-hmm. um, but not everybody's going to understand. Mm-hmm. And so just 
the more you can let that roll off your back, the more you'll be able to stay committed to whatever it is that your big thing that you're creating, um, mm-hmm. because it's not for everybody to understand. Right. And I think most people, I bet when you wrote your book last year, you know, were like, oh, but can you really do it? And I don't know. And this, and they, they really yeah. just want you to be safe and okay, but it, it, it can, you know, be really hard and to hear those things. And so, um, in fact, one of the things that I've realized in the last few years is when I get that kind of feedback for me, I mm-hmm. actually know I'm onto something because mm-hmm. if most people think that I'm a little crazy, it's probably really good choice for me. Yeah. yeah um, and then I the do bird. have, you know, and then of course, ha- find the people in your life. And if you don't have them, go find some, you know, other entrepreneurs or other people doing whatever you're doing um, to remind you that you're not, you're not crazy. We're, we're all doing these big things together. Um, yeah. You will have that support as well. You will get it all you know, yes, you can get in your own way with the how and all these other things that we talked about today. But I think that's the thing that continually surprises me after 20 plus years of doing crazy things. Um, I still get feedback um, that isn't is intended to be supportive, but isn't. Yeah. And thank you so much for for bringing that up because Mm -hmm. social pressure is real. Right. And, and especially if it's coming from our family or close friends who, like you said, who have all the good intentions and who really, uh, you know, love us and want the good for us. But yet at the same time, they just have have maybe a very completely different approach. And so to to be strong enough to be, you know, to have kind of your own conviction in in pursuing whatever life that you dream about. Um, it, it does take some courage, but I, I think it's also the first step is, is awareness, which is what you just did. Uh, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, just kind of giving people this uh, kind of a heads up, right, is, is to mm-hmm. make sure that you are going to get these other, whether it's comments, feedback, or whatever that may not be in alignment with what you want to do, and how to kind of, you know, really break through that. And I think also this is another reason why I'm having this show is to create a community of like-minded women where we all want to do something bigger and greater, both for ourselves and then for for the world. And so when you surround yourself with people like-minded like us, then you know you're more likely to get the kind of encouragement and support that that you need to make those moves in life. So thank you for bringing Absolutely. that up. Absolutely, that's really really. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for coming onto my show. I really, really uh, enjoyed our conversation as always. And um, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it as well. Thanks so much for having me. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to the Women and Money Empowerment Show. If you ever have doubt for moments about yourself, your capability, or your worthiness, please remember to keep coming back to these stories and lean in. Draw the wisdom and strength from these incredible women and know that you also have what it takes to live a fulfilling life. Until next time, have a fabulous day.